Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome along then to round seven of the GPBWC World Sport Series. We are here at the Autodromo de Monza, 5.8 kilometer circuit, and we are now for only four rounds, can you believe it, from the end of what has been a, a rather extraordinary championship, it must be said. My name is James Kirk, and alongside me once again is Lewis McGlade. And, well, Lewis, we, be, we saw basically last time out in Britain that the championship has kind of boiled down to only two people now, Oscar Hardwick and Alex Cooper. But here at Monza, we have a little bit of a shake-up in the order. We have well, a brand new prodigy to GPWC, real-time F2000 racer Wyatt Gooden taking part, acting as Petter Carter's replacement at Target Racing. And we also have Tom Parker back from his week uh, break, back with Midnight. And there's plenty of things that can happen around Monza. The Formula Challenge race had a lot of uh, interesting scenarios in it. And even though we don't have rain here today, I'm sure we might have a few good battles to look forward to here as well. Yeah, these, uh, these Porsches, they're quite large in comparison to the Formula Challenge cars. Um, and, you know, with that, you're going around a circuit such as, as Monza with the, uh, the first chicane, which is a bit iffy you know with with a lot of cars going around i mean we've got what 19 20 cars driving around here today um and that first corner uh on the first lap from the start is going to be interesting it's going to be one to look out for and uh see if anyone gets caught up or if these drivers can actually drive their way through it and and carve that sweet line that will you know hopefully put them into a decent position it's going to be a difficult one well one person not carving a good line through turn one is pedro malim spun straight away I, I i'm aware that he's taken a bit of a risk on setup and it doesn't seem to have worked out for him a spin straight away we'll probably see him start much further down the order than he would like but i tell you what malim had an extremely impressive round last time out only had a couple minutes in the car before he went into qualifying and he now finds himself fourth in the championship and within a chance of snatching third if he keeps up his pace with uh, tom parker of course out for a round that said, though, Parker is looking on the pace, and I imagine that, well, at this rate, if Malim struggles with his setup any further, Parker may very well be able to secure that third place uh, at this early stage of the final few rounds of this season. Yeah, I think it's a bit early to uh, to tell even from like a championship lead perspective or, or from any position further down the grid. I mean, if you look at like the lead between Oscar Harbour and Alex Cooper, there's... Um, Alex Cooper on 193 points and Hardwick on 238. So that's, you know, a fairly large gap for Hardwick to cl uh, for um, Cooper even to close up. But you know there is 200 points still on the table for you know the the, the driver who wins all the races if that is even possible. But you know, there's a good chunk of points left out there for anyone to grab, and it'll be interesting to see who takes advantage of that and can Cooper pull this gap back. But it does look at the moment like the championship fight is between Cooper and Hardwick. Well, let's have a look at what Mr. Malim does. Our provisional poll time is a 153.5. Not as bad as I thought it was going to be. But that's going to be a good couple of seconds off poll. And now let's actually transfer over to Oscar Hardwick, who's just started his first flying lap as Jarl tie in there. Back from a very controversial Monaco round. Got disqualified after after leaving or rather I should say chatting in the room in quite explosive fashion uh, he's there in third Paul Joseph though now goes into provisional pole with a 152.1 the fastest though in free practice was once again Oscar Hardwick and I believe he did a 149.2 really really on fire and he's not a full round of points of maximum points ahead of Cooper he's 45 points ahead of Cooper and so if Hardwick was retire theoretically from both races in this round and Cooper was to win both and Cooper would take the lead but Hardwick has just been consistently good and even on this lap now he's just looking absolutely planted yeah and he did actually go a little bit faster through sector one it's about two tenths up so Hardwick is on a charge at the moment to take <laughs> yeah another pole position this year and uh, it'll be interesting to see as he comes up to the second sector split he is still up um, and he is looking ever so strong for that pole position once again He's the man with the most pole positions this season is Hardwick. Currently three. Alex Cooper has two and Petr Kasa has one. And he's also the man with the most wins. He's won six races 
out of the 12 so far, and I'm sure that he'll want to keep up his little one all the half races stat, which he's got going since Britain. But he rounds the Parabolica now, does Hardwick, and he will come back on to the start finish straight. We presume this will go on top, and wow. indeed it does. A 149.8 puts him a full 1.2 seconds clear of Scott Sovic there in second position. I tell you what, Scott has done an incredible job there to out-qualify not only his teammate, but the likes of Beresford, Watkins, Joseph, Malim. Uh, and yeah, wow. That's, uh, he's even out-qualified Jack Cedric, who's had another terrible pole lap, actually. Yeah, Cooper is also going for it. He's one, uh, 0.15 off in the first sector. He's 0.3 off in the second sector. Um, and he's got a few cars ahead of him at the moment. And... Uh, I don't know. I don't know how much that would cost him. If we were even give him a benefit, I don't think so. Um, but it's interesting to see what's going to where Alex Cooper's going to go. I think he's going to be hoping for at least a front row start here. Absolutely. We've got to keep an eye out for Tom Parker as well, who's just down the road as well. So these two Midnight boys should be coming in close succession. Midnight, of course, leading the constructors' championship now. And I imagine Cooper might actually have a little advantage here with the slipstream. Oscar did not have that luxury. And Cooper crosses the line to do a 150.3 comfortably into second. Teammate Parker just coming across the line now to go. Oh, not as good. He's fifth. And so the FA Racing boys split the Midnight boys. And that's actually very interesting to see. I thought Parker was going to have a bit more of a better qualifying lap than that, to be brutally honest. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I agree. I thought he would have gone a little bit faster. But uh, nevertheless, he's put it into fifth at the moment. Um, interesting if anyone's watching this for the first time, they only get one shot in qualifying, only one lap to get it right, um, and Oscar Hardwick is the one who's got it the most right at the moment and is currently topping the uh, the timing. Still have a, oh dear, well, we've got our first disqualification from qualifying, Dennis Schutz uh, driving for drag racing, drag racing actually back in full, amazingly, uh, they got Christoph Lichtenstein here. And they've got Dennis Schutz here, and oh my word, what's going on with people? It seems that people can't seem to follow simple rules. Both Schutz and DeConnick have done four laps when it's one shot quality. And that astonishes me, because DeConnick has been here for quite a few rounds as well. So they will both start, they, they effectively form the back row of the grid now. Yeah, some of these things may be a little bit accidental due to the way our factor may work. I don't know if... Um if as they're going through the pit lane um, that they actually cross the start finish line and that would theoretically state that you're starting a fourth lap even though that wasn't the original plan so um, yeah, it's just, it's just a few things that may cause some more problems but um, I'm, I don't think it was specifically intentional especially for someone like DeConnick who's been here a few times before so it's interesting to see what's going to happen with that Right, let's have a little look at Jason Muscat now for Epic Racing. Missed out a round and has really been the lone Epic car for a lot of this championship. The original two, Lee Davidson and Andy Smith, well, they weren't very well received. They were often off the pace and often criticised. Oh, dearie me, and I see Simon Crane off there in the background for SS. So he's been this lap, but Jason Muscat has been doing a very good job for Epic, actually. And I think he deserved his one-week break, especially after... All he has done, a little bit wobbly on the exit of Lesmo 2 there, kicking up a bit of dust. But so far, solid so far, and I imagine that he'll be aiming to get inside the top 10 at least. But it's it's crazy to think we've also got, well, obviously Simon Crane's been this lap, but we've got to watch out for Wyatt Gooden as well. Bit of a prodigy here at GPWC, and he's currently in Sector 1 as we keep an eye on Jason Muscat still. Uh, but... Wyatt has been there or thereabouts, not only in WSS here, but in Super Cup as well, where he got a podium on his debut. Yeah, he's uh, he's really showing himself as a good driver and as a driver that deserves to be here and deserves to be fighting at the uh, the front as Muscat's oh, basically drifting no. it around the Parabolica. Um, well, unfortunate there. I think he's already dropped his lap quite considerably. But yes, uh, Wyatt, he is a very quick driver, and I think we all know that. Um, I'm, I'm wondering where he can actually put it. Where, can he put it in the top three? He's actually, wow, he's fastest at the moment. He's point oh, wow. of a second up on Hardwick's time. So can, can Wyatt Gooden <laughs> get pole? This on is debut. Really very interesting one to watch at the moment. Keep your eye on Wyatt Gooden. 
This is the last time Target Racing got a pole position. It was their only pole position at the Spanish Sports Series with Petter Casa. Here is his replacement. Why a good looking about on equal pace actually is Petter and he rounds the Parabolica really solidly. A lot of people have been worrying about Wyatt throughout this round so far in free practice and he crosses the line to oh Ooh. he lost out by two tenths there in the final sector don't put it past him starting on the front row on debut is a fantastic achievement there for Wyatt but for a moment there I reckon Hardwick was very very scared uh, I would have been if I was Hardwick although um, it is interesting to point out that Wyatt isn't playing any part in the actual championship no. um, but uh, I think well, he, he can help in the constructors. Yes. yes. Um, well, even then, he can play a key part as to who he's dueling with throughout the race. I mean, yeah, this if he's dueling out, say, with Oscar Hardwick and then a mistake happens or something like that, and then Hardwick's into the barrier, then Hardwick's just lost a load of points. Um, so it's going to be a very interesting way to see how Gooden's placing his tyres and how Hardwick reacts to dueling with someone who isn't really in the championship position. Um, right. It's going to be an interesting race there, Hardwick. Oh, completely. Completely. And uh, we, we saw Hardwick in Super Cup, didn't we? have a bit of issues with Renier. He had a massive battle in the opening laps and then was left for dead, pretty much. So, let's we'll see how we can handle the pressure of a new challenger in Wyatt, at least. As we now have a little look here at Christoph Lichtenstein. He's just around the Parabolica now. Only two more people to set times. Himself and Miles Dixon, who will go on to his hot lap, the final hot lap of the day. Christoph crosses the line for Drake, and that's a decent effort from him, 153.361, and that will put him into 11th, so just outside the top 10. But now we look effort. to Mark, it is a good effort, yeah, and especially on his first day back at least. Uh, better than his teammate who's got a DQ, unfortunately. Oz Dixon, though, heavily locking up into turn one, and Miles has had a bit of a, well, it's been a bit of a sketchy season. He, of course, had four tirements in a row, and he's been a bit patchy from... You know, here to there. His teammate, Glenn Guest, didn't have... Well, he didn't have a good season either up until Great Britain. He had retirements and non-scores. Then he got a podium out of nowhere. And I'm quite disappointed to not see Guest here. Oh, locking up heavily into the Della Rogier chicane. And well, I don't see Dixon qualifying in the top 10 either. But I'm, I'm ashamed. I'm, well, I'm not ashamed, but I'm a bit sad to not see Guest here. Because it seemed like after so much bad luck, things were finally looking up for Slipstream. Yep, agreed. Agreed. It is a shame when uh, a driver can't appear for whatever reason. Because, um, you know, sometimes from a spectator's point of view, it takes away what could have been a really good duel. But I think the important thing that everyone has to realise is that with this, everyone has their own life outside of this, and that has to take priority. And so, for whatever reason, guests can't be here. We look, though, to his teammate, Miles Dixon, who's not been looking like the strongest man around. And, oh, well, that was... Line. Uh, that was a corner cut, if ever I've seen one, and I believe he might very well be taken to the back of the grid for that. We're quite tight on corner cutting here at GPWC, and I mean, I, I know that it's still going cross travel and stuff, but that's a clear time advantage because you're maintaining momentum. Advantage. Yeah, yeah, you are gaining more momentum as opposed to going around the left-hander and the, uh, the last oh, part and of he, the Scottish game. Well, I'm not sure, well, if that will help. I, I do wonder whether... Now, see, Miles, I'm not sure what's going to happen to you there. If I was you, I would have pulled into the pits or I would have slowed down on the straight to show that you'd cut the corner. Yeah. But either way, he's qualified 13th. I'm not sure whether that'll stand. But Oscar Hardwick then, fourth pole position of the year, his first one since Turkey. So that was only two rounds ago. And, well, it wasn't actually as bad as well it wasn't as far apart as we first imagined it was going to be why good in there really holding hardwick to account there only two tenths off in second and cooper rounds out the top three for midnight so still in the ballpark but a further three tenths off gooden shout out to the fa racing boys though fourth and fifth for the fa racing team they're fifth currently in the constructors and they'll be looking at target and possibly even simming and thinking we can get some good points on these guys here today yeah, it's going to be an interesting race when it actually starts up, and that will not hopefully be too far away. I think Miles Dixon will be going to the back of the grid as well, just to keep you updated. All right then, so, 
everyone will be entering warm up now. Uh, we've got about 10 minutes or so of warm up, and then we'll be heading to race one. If you've not joined us here before, we of course have two races uh, in WSS. Race one, the starting grid is determined, of course, by qualifying. The second grid, however, is decided by a reverse grid determined by random.org. The top 15 to 20 are reverse, and I believe that we may very well... Let's just check what the final count is in the room. Right, so we have 21 in the room. Does that mean that we will not have the chance for a full reverse grid? Uh, but near enough it, one person... Whoever that is, will be unlucky to not be involved in the reverse grid process. But I love the I love race two overall really. It just provides opportunity for so many people to get a race win. But not only that, it provides opportunity for those constant race winners to actually, you know, show this is how good I am coming from the back of the grid. Yep, agreed. Race two is a really good um concept to happen sometimes it goes wrong you know with uh crash at the first corner with some more uh inexperienced drivers at the front you know you can cause a fairly significant pile up but these things uh, are fairly rare to be perfectly honest i mean usually you kind of think race two you've got all these inexperienced drivers at the front this is going to end really really badly and most of the time it actually doesn't it goes really really well we have some absolutely amazing racing with some people who shouldn't be at the front who are at the front you know it's really great stuff and you've got your oscar hardwicks battling through the crowd of people it is a really good um way to to have a a race in the evening is to, just to have this reverse grid idea it's really good Right, well, whoever's at the back of the grid, I believe, will have a friend. Because new man, Matt Leonowitz, has joined us for SS Motorsport. Uh, and, well, we saw Ari Niemannen join us late last time at Britain. And he did pretty well. I believe he got two top tens in the end or something to that effect. Really, you know... Even just turning up, I mean, qualifying, yes, is part and parcel of the story. You can always be in a better position if you're at the front. But even just joining now for the team will help him because there's the top 15 score points. And, you know, if you're able to keep out the madness, especially at the first turn, that's the one we're going to be looking out for because these Porsches are notoriously evil in the braking zone. A lot of people expecting an action there. If you can keep clean through this, there's always a chance of points. Yeah, I mean, when you're considering that um, more than half of the drivers on the grid are going to get the po are going to get some sort of points, um, provided they finish the race, you know, that is, uh, it doesn't matter when you're joining. Uh, yes, it would be ideal to join through qualifying, but um, you know, it's it's going to be at least joining the session. At least there's some, you know, it's better late than never, really. Um, and, and there's still points up for grabs, and especially considering these races kind of go a bit all over the place and there's some drivers ending up in really obscure places, obscure positions by the end of the race. Um, you know, joining at any time in the session can really actually gift you anything, really, anything from, from one point, you know, as, to as even, I, I would say this unrealistically, but, you know, even 25 points provides you have the race go completely right for you. Mm. Oh, completely. Right then, so, let's have a look in a, in a bit more detail at the drivers and constructors as they are. So, as we alluded to, Hardwick leads the championship on 238 points, 45 ahead of Alex Cooper. Now, if Hardwick can get five more points into that lead, or actually, let's say six more points for the simplicity of it, that will mean that he has a full round's worth of wins as a cushion in that lead. And that's, you know, this could be potentially a turning point. It was a turning point in Super Cup just last week. This could very well be a turning point and possibly a deciding round even in the WSS this season itself. We then have Tom Parker quite a way back on 118. He's in a bit of clear space, but both Pedro Malim on 84 and Jordan Weeks on 70 are both here today. Both are good drivers. Both have got podiums. And they could really challenge Parker if he has a bad round. We now look to the constructors. Midnight leads on 308. They are currently 44 points ahead of Milk Racing. And of course, with constructor points, you've got much more chart. Well, you've got much bigger points to gain 
And so that's still very much open to debate, you know, who can win that. But the fact of the matter is that Milk Racing have not had a second driver for a good four or five rounds now. And that really hurts them. They are actually, well, Simix in no better situation. They've only had one drive for a couple of rounds as well. But they're over 100 points back from Milk, 154. The ones, well, Target again today only have one driver in the form of Wyatt Gooden. He's a good driver. But just look at Hardwick. He can't support the team and the constructors on their own. So they're on 111 points there. The ones to look out for are FA Racing. Because they've got two drivers here. Qualified fourth and fifth. That's incredibly good prospects for the team in fifth place there. Yeah, they're really going to be the uh, the team to look out for to see if they can actually take advantage of the fact that they're one of the only teams here to have um, two drivers at the moment and see how much they can take advantage of the opportunity of course uh midnight also have two drivers here and i think their goal has got to be more about bridging the gap to milk even further because oscar hardwick is is you know he's on top form and if at any point throughout the championship he well you know there's only there's not very long left there's only three rounds after this um so four rounds including this uh, if he gets a teammate at any point who can consistently score decent points then oscar hardwick would be scoring the great points to the points that they really really need and then milk could start closing in that gap it's going to be a, a really interesting tale for the rest of the championship but it does look increasingly likely like um midnight are going to take the constructors and well i say it looks like that way absolutely but i just want to have a look at the rounds which we have left because i think we've got very challenging rounds for these cars in the next month and a bit or so. Uh, two months, basically. We've got Monza here. These cars do not handle corners very well. And the corners here at Monza are challenging. They're difficult. Ascari, especially. Parabolica for consistency and you know maintaining speed. The Lesmo is just for pure turn. Then we go to Spa. Arguably one of the most difficult tracks to drive. These cars, I will see, be, well, they must be a, quite a handful around there. I haven't tested them myself, but I imagine they would be. We then go to Manny Core. Very, very bumpy, must be said. Uh, and, well, I imagine there'd be you know, similar difficulties there as we have here in Monza. And then we end at the Nürburgring, which is very corner-driven. Although there's some long straights there. Really, it's the corners where you gain all the time. And as I've already said, these cars do not handle corners all that well. So, this championship, it may look simple on the outside of it. But on the inside, I would highly recommend tuning in to these next four. And once this is finished, three rounds. Because let me tell you, a lot could still change in that time. Yeah, well, Scott Sovic planted it in the wall. Then uh, he has. <laughs> But, yes, of course, um, you know, the four rounds that we have left here, um, Belgium, uh, uh, France and Germany, they're, they're difficult tracks. They are, you know, as it's been stated. Um, but if you look at Oscar Hardwick, Oscar Hardwick's really good at uh, coping with a struggling car. And I don't think he'll have too much problem uh, um, at the next four, well, including here, uh, the four rounds that we have left. So I, I, th I think um, Hardwick's in a really good position, but from a team's perspective, obviously Midnight have been coping really, really well um, over the over the time that they've had. So it's going to be uh, it's it's going to be really hard to tell who's going to be where throughout the the rest of this championship. But I mean, if you're looking at the top, it does look at the moment, at present, like Midnight's going to take the constructors and Oscar Hardwick's going to take the drivers, but. There's something telling me that it's just not going to be as simple as that. And something that I really hope it's not just going to be as simple as that. Because <laughs> we all like a good championship fight. Absolutely. But I think let, let's let focus on Monza now, shall we? Out of the guys currently in the server here, we've got about 23 of us now, actually. Which is very nice. It's one of the best, better turnouts that we've had. Who are you looking at as a potential race winner here in race one? Well, I don't think you could take anything away from... Oscar Hardwick, he's got the pace, he's got the car really, um, you know, turned in. He's got it all ready, basically, for this. And I think Hardwick's in a really good place to take the the win in race one. 
But I will be looking to Wyatt to see where he can position the car, how he can cope with uh, fighting the front in a, in these Porsches. So um, it's going to be a really interesting thing. I think Wyatt's going to be one to look out for, but Oscar's probably more likely to take the race one win. I reckon it'll be Oscar as well. And it'd be hard to argue against him. He's had three race one wins throughout the WSS this season. In fact, he won an entire round all to himself in Turkey, so he's got the potential to do it easily in both races. The yeah, Factor Man utters his famous words, and ladies and gentlemen, I suggest you strap yourselves in. We're about to have 12 very interesting laps, I hope, of great racing action. There'll be thrills, there'll be spills. But leading us off from the off will be our current championship leader, Oscar Hardwick and there's going to be a lot on his shoulders with the pressure behind him in the form of Wyatt Gooden for target but I tell you what turn one is going to be the thing that we're going to be looking out for so everyone is just going to head off on their formation lap now there we go <laughs> and yep as we say Oscar Hardwick then for Milk Racing is on that pole position with Wyatt Gooden for target there in second Alex Cooper currently second in the championship for Midnight Motorsport is third. And then we have the FA Racing Duo of Scott Sovic and Jordan Weeks there. Looking very strong here. And looking to hopefully improve on their fifth position in the Constructors' Championship. Tom Parker for Midnight starts sixth with Scott Beresford, the lone Enterprise GP driver here in seventh. Paul Watkins, the old man himself, will start P8 for TWR with Paul Joseph for Royal Blue in ninth. And Mike Bell, after a very impressive debut, it must be said... In Great Britain last time out for Laurentian GP will start in the top 10 here today. Christoph Lichtenstein and Drake Racing's return to WSS will start P11 with Pedro Malin for Simink in a lowly 12th. Jason Muscat for Epic Racing Team will start P13 with Jack Cedric for Pulse Racing in P14. Jack of course had a very very strong round out last time uh, in Great Britain took a second and a fourth position and it's catapulted Pulse up the constructors. But a lowly starting position here again. We'll have to see what he can do. Chris Williamson, girl Chris Williamson will start P15 for Woods Racing with Simon Crane behind him for SS Motorsport in 16th. Matt Richards for Team Roxal will start P17 with Miles Dixon P18. Gal Tyen for Infinity Esports will start P19. With Nico de Conning for Indivision rounding up the top 20. We then have debutante Dennis Schutz for Drag Racing starting P21. Also debutante Matt Leonowitz for SS Motorsport starting P22. And starting last on the grid will be Matt Richards' teammate Gary Lennon for Team Roxal. And I tell you what, Team Roxal. And Gary Lennon have had some good results here in the past. I know he started from the back of the grid, but at Monza sometimes that's the best place to start, and I'd say watch out for him as well. Yeah, starting from the back can actually be uh, can play in the favour of a driver, especially around here with that first corner. It means you can stay out of some of what has been known as the Monza first corner carnage. It is. Uh, it can be. Oh, hello. The, oh, yeah. I someone. see Dennis Schutz there. He's just clouted the wall. Okay. Oh that's... dear. That's a bit of a shame there for a debutante. Um, but yeah, this is going to be a really interesting race. Got quite a busy grid, especially for uh, WSS. Mm. Uh, 23 cars. See how they navigate their way around that first corner, that first chicane. Um, but they're all lining up on the grid now, so it's not very long to wait. I am not liking the look of Dennis at the moment. He's got a puncture and he is not pitted. That is going to end really, really That's... badly. This... It must be... Let's clear it up with the viewers. There can be a red flag if there are five or more retirements, usually is the key number, in the first lap or so. Of course, it's up to the race director's discretion. We have to see whether that happens. We certainly hope not. The red lights come on. The engine revs will rise. And here at Monza, we are away. A decent start by everyone. Lovely start by Tom Parker there in six. A couple of people coming off to the left. Good stop from Hardwick overall, though. He is mightily pulling away from White Green. Tom Parker up to third already, though. A great start from the midnight driver. And here we go. It's a turn one. There's already carnage behind. I can hear people crashing together. And oh, there's Nico to Conic off into the background. But, and oh my goodness me, there's someone mounting the back of a car there. I think that was Mike Bell. But apart from that, everyone else seems to have gone through all right. 
There are yes. a bit of car yeah, a bit of car mounting, but yeah, I think that's all right from everyone. Shit uh, did have a little bit of a problem there. It did seem like um, the car pulled to one side, and that's why he went to the back. And I think it was Deconic actually that he went to the back of. But uh, nevertheless, not really the uh, the first corner that we were expecting, which is a really really good thing. Oh hello! Uh, I've heard a massive crash behind. There's Jason Musket off. Who else is off? There's Yarl Tyen off. I think uh, Chris Williamson. Then he shuts off again. Uh, oh god, this. Oh, I. Th the back of the grid is not a pretty picture, Lewis. It is not. Should should have hit it. Uh, to be perfectly honest. But uh, it's oh, there's Tian getting a little bit sideways going through the second Lesmo. Um, it is it is always a bit difficult to manage these cars around this track, especially when at some point some of them are trying to go too wide around it. It's not the uh, the easiest thing to do in the world is to take a car too wide through here. It's all. Oh. Parker. Um, my game decided to Right then, apologies ladies and gentlemen, we had a bit of a lag spike, you might There's been more carnage. Dennis Lutz has, uh, Schutz has pitted, sorry. Nico Japonics pitted. Chris Williamson's off again. Simon Crane's been off. It's it's all gone a bit pitong in the midfield. Yeah, As all, who's that? Racing, people. Look at um, Sosovic down to 16th place. Mm -hmm. So he's dropped back a considerable margin. Um, but that's the thing, is that when this track gets a bit busy, it can go a bit hectic. Um, and the front there, you've still got Austin Hubbard leading away. Um, Wyatt Gooden, though, keeping him in check, only 1.1 seconds behind, and keeping that gap roughly as it is, so uh, Wyatt not letting us get away this time at the time. You must wonder whether either of these have more a tank. Because, I mean, I was expecting half to leave Gooden for him, but in this case, he's actually been caught up over this set of three tenths or so. The man from the USA is on a real challenge at the moment, actually. Yeah, I did hear it from some of the drivers that sometimes the uh, the fuel ballast actually can give some sort of, not really an advantage, but can make the car sit better. But look at Wyatt now in second mm. place. He is closing in very quickly on Oscar Hardwick. Let's have a look at the uh, the second sector split time between the two as they're about to come oh, to it's it. Oh, three tenths. Three. Wow. Wow. Okay, so Wyatt is oh, my on top word. form at the moment. Look at him. He's planted through Ascari and... He'll have the slipstream of Hardwick, absolutely. I'll go through the top ten once we've left this battle, hopefully. But my word, Gooden on an absolute stormer here. As we enter the Parabolic, and nothing will be done here. I imagine the move will be attempted to made, or will, will be attempted to be made, I should say, into 
turn one. I'll we'll quickly go through the uh, top uh, ten now. Cooper third, Scott Beresford in fourth, Pedro Malim uh, fifth. Right, we apologise again. Sim Race TV isn't behaving. But basically, nothing has changed. Wyatt Gooden is still in second place. He wasn't able to make the move. As I was saying, Cooper there, of the Alex Variety, is in third. Scott Beresford's holding his own in fourth with Pedro Millen in fifth. And look at this carnage into turn one. There is Jordan Weeks almost into the side of Tom Parker. I didn't realise how close these guys were. Here we've got Malim, Bell, Parker and Weeks all in a train from fifth to eighth. Paul Joseph in ninth there will be thinking, hmm, and hello, Ryan Gooden's through. Hardwick's gone wide to the De La Roche chicane. It's all kicked off as we've headed back here. Hardwick went off of the De La Roche chicane, and Wyatt Gooden on debut leads this race now. Yep, we're just getting the replay on screen for them now. Let's have a look at what actually happened. He just went over the curb. Oh, ooh, he did smack the wall as well, but I think these cars are pretty strong and they'll be able to take that. But Wyatt Gooden leads here so that is very impressive there for a, a debutante in these cars um and he's not really been sim racing for too long for gpbw no he so hasn't he's completely showing his form leading here in italy very good stuff there from wyatt is that pressure gain to hardwick oh it, i don't know it could be uh he's, he's done well under pressure sometimes especially in turkey from cooper but uh, you, you never really know with these kind of situations. Oscar, though, he just needs to keep it on the road, just needs to score some consistent points and, you know, just uh, you know, be ahead of Cooper. Cooper is his main target at the moment. Right, let's head back to this battle between 5th, 6th, 7th and 8th indeed. I think Mike Bell sort of tailored off a bit, but the battle between Weeks and Parker is definitely hotting up. Malim not getting away from these two drivers at the moment either. And these guys have been tooth and nail for the past couple of laps. Really close stuff. I think there's been a bit of argy-bargy here and there. But nothing to say that they'll be taking each other out. Parker, though, looks like he's in control. He's in the slipstream of Malim. Really, really catching up, actually, on the Portuguese's Parker. He's going to pull out to the left. And he takes him before he's even into the corner. Actually, here comes Weeks as well. Oh, and there's a bit of contact there. Parker parked in. Oh, dear, Malim. Getting all shook up uh, across the turn one chicane there. And Bell's going to be right onto the back of him as well. Can you take him around the outside of Curva Grande? He's got the speed to do it, I think. Or will Malin be able to hold it? I think he may just be able to. But, of course, into the entrance to the Delarogi chicane. I'd imagine Mike Bell will have him under braking. Indeed, yes, he does. Decent move there from Mike Bell. And nice defense on the exit there. But he goes a little bit wide. Can Malin get him on the cut back? I imagine he will be able to just stick it up into Lesmo 1. Oh, it's oh, so man. close and it was contact and Mike Bell's gone wide. And well, I think that was a bit silly of Bell, to be honest. He should have given up when Malin was alongside. And well, Bell has been shuffled down to ninth now behind Paul Joseph. Yeah, he's a struggle enough to go around there too wide in an open wheeler. I wouldn't really like to be doing it in a, uh, in a Porsche. Oh, but, Cooper's uh, round. Huh? Cooper's round. Oh, he lost it on the exit of Ascari. I was wow. just having a look at him now, and I think he's actually got such a big gap to Scott Beresford that, yes, yeah, Scott Beresford has not been able to capitalise on that at the moment. I do wonder whether the speed differential is going to... No. I think Cooper might very well get away with this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. basically Cooper Mark Webbered it. Um, yeah, he did indeed, as, yeah. As uh, if, if any of you actually do watch Formula 1 watching, uh, which I think some of you probably would. Um, just a bit of going over the curve on the outside of Ascari and then just dropping the rear of it and then it spins around and uh, it's, it's a bit of an uncomfortable situation because you know there's a barrier that you can really give a good whack luckily though Cooper kept out of it Scott Beresford not too far behind now but uh, Alex Cooper just needs to keep that car on the road right it seems that Miles Dixon's had a bit of an issue at the power of Bollocker he's been shuffled down to P17 and everything's a bit more split out now it must be said the battle between Parker Weeks and Malim and Bell has been very much separated over this past lap. So let's take this. Ooh, shirts, oh, hello. Shirts. Um, he just went uh, basically two wheels through the uh, De La Roche chicane. He is yeah, a lap down. At the oh, moment. my oh. God. He worries me, that boy. He worries me. DNF. Yep. Crane out of the race off first retirement. I'm surprised he's off first retirement after six laps. It's quite extraordinary. But Dennis worries me. 
He really does. He's been looking out of place almost throughout this entire round so far. And um, not giving me much faith in as a back marker. I agree. I don't know. Um, he's, he's just struggling. Maybe he didn't know. Uh, if he's new to our factory, he may not have known that he had a puncture at the start. It's not really particularly obvious. Um, whereas in some games, you open up. Um, like the, the tire display. Oh, oh my okay, god! That was, well, that was silly. That was silly. That was a back marker trying to go through. And oh my Ooh. god! <sighs> wow, okay. This is going to be getting a bit dangerous now for some of these drivers as he's still sitting, he's just sitting on the racing line. Well, uh, let's leave it to the race directors to decide what, what to make of it, but mm, he's, he's not giving us much hope. So, anyway, let us go through. The top 10 as they are now. Wyatt Gooden is still leading Ooh, by two oh, points. Oh, again. He's just taking someone out, I think. Oh, and Paul Joseph. Paul Joseph went off, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure if that was him tapping the back of it, but uh, it looked slightly suspicious from the angle that I saw. Oh, and here we go. We've got the old... Oh, God, he's got Jarl Tim back. He's getting in front of them. Oh, and now oh, and Jarl's just Mike Bell into... And, yeah, Dennis Schutz has been removed from the game uh, and I think rightly so he was getting in the way of people and he was a danger to others around him and that ends yeah that that's just disappointing really that is quite disappointing unfortunately uh, you know it, it's never really good to see a new driver appear and then uh, you just not really follow the rules specifically and it is a bit of a shame I'll be interested to see his opinion from from what just happened but um, it's pretty black and white from this point of view at the moment yeah, well, let's live and forget. We currently have a good race on, and it's Wyatt Gooden who's leading it by 2.1 seconds still. Hardwick keeping the gap, but not necessarily making any indents into it, really. Alex Cooper still in third, with Scott Beresford fourth. Holding on to Cooper, but not enough to really threaten him as such. Tom Parker, though, there. He is in the background in P5, and I believe he's catching on Beresford ever so slightly. So he could still have a chance at fourth by the end of the race, as he do. He cuts the <laughs> Scottish chicane rather badly there. But then we've got Jordan Weeks in sixth, Pedro Milim seventh, Paul Watkins up into eighth. And then, oh, we've got something of a battle here. We've got Mike Bell in ninth and Jarl Tyen in tenth there. And oh my god, they're getting very close together into Ascari. And, well, Jarl just blatantly cut the chicane there. And if he, he tries, if he goes for a move here, that to me seems a bit illegal. And oh my god, Ooh, what wow, is he that's doing? Weaving. Well, well, obviously he's not defending for anyone, but <laughs> that's uh, an interesting way to attempt an overtake, I suppose. Perhaps he was slowing down. There's our way of slowing sometimes down. Sometimes if you lose the car, it can just get a bit wobbly and hard to control. Um, but <laughs> probably not the most comfortable thing to be going, you know, 150 odd miles an hour and then just <laughs> sliding down the straight. Absolutely not. But here we go. He's going to have a little look at Mike Bell, presumably. Into turn one is Jarl. One of the more controversial drivers here on GVWC coming up against another one of the more controversial drivers. And he almost plows into Paul Watkins there. And I believe that he's going to lose another position here to Jarl. And indeed he does. Michael shuffled down to P10. Uh, and, oh, hello. We've got wow, a little battle here for P15. Oh, my word. We've got Mike. Wow. Matt Richards mounting the curb. Miles Dixon trying to get around him. Fails to do so. Jason Muscat on the edge of the points here. Well, it, it, he, he had nowhere to go, really. And, uh, oh, no, he's, Muscat, oh, no, oh he's my not word. The I thought Muscat may have had the drive to go around the curve of Grande. He's going to have a little look at the Della Roger chicane, is he? Let's have a look. Oh, not no, quite. Not he's quite. taking the outside. Keeping it safe. And, oh, there goes Matt Richards-White. And, God, it's, it's really scrappy racing. This is daredevil stuff, almost. And, oh, I see one oh, of the I SS Motorsport see, cars yeah. in the background there. I think yeah, that was I Matt Leonowitz. Well. Uh, and, yes... Not exactly the best driving standards around, but it provides for some entertainment at least. Yeah, it is. It is always a good, uh, nice Wednesday night. Just, just see who can <laughs> crash into who. Oh gosh, bless them all. Uh, we're on lap eight of lap twelve. Joy to watch. It's joy to watch. I lie. We're on lap nine of twelve even. Why are Gooden and Oscar Harvick on lap nine? Um, and hello, what's happened to Mike Bell? He's been shuffled down to P13. I think he had an issue at Ascari there. Paul Joseph, Sedgwick, and uh, Scott Sovic are through. And hello, we've got Scott Sovic on the back of Jarl Tyen here. Now, Scott had the pace to be able to get his car into fourth, his best qualifying of the year. And we've seen in the past, especially at Turkey, he does have the pace on occasion to battle for those podium positions. And it looks like he's going to get Jarl 
reasonably easy here on the straight in the slipstream. He pulls to the uh, outside here. Interesting choice of line. And he is ahead on the straight as it is. But I don't think he's going to be able to get Jarl into turn one. Because Jarl, of course, is on the inside line. Oh, nicely done. Lovely move from Scott Sobic. And oh, my word. Almost lost it on the exit there. But he got him around the outside of turn one. Lovely move from the Norwegian there. On yeah. Norwegian as well. Yep, yeah, that was a lovely, lovely move. And it was just uh, keeping Tien behind now. Um, at least until De La Roche Chicane. Then things all kind of balance out again. But uh, we'll just have a look see how this goes. As Tien's you could break Oh, the my lane. word. Wow. Really? Okay, that was, well. That was that was quite well held. Uh, he went a bit wide. Oh, is that Malim? That is oh, Malim. That is Malim. He's had a bit of an issue. And Scott Sobic right through on Jarl again into Lesmo who won. The two Norwegians providing excellent clean racing here. And I, I, I will go back to the move into the Delaroche chicane. Really, really ballsy stuff from Tyen to be able to just stick it in there and hope for the best. But they got Malim here and he's just up the road. These two could be looking at a possible... Eighth place on the cards, but they're side by side, quite literally. As we head up into Ascari, Sobic cuts off Tyen, but Tyen's going to look to the inside again. And oh, oh my no. god, he's lost it! Oh my word! I think good call from Sobic to completely miss the Ascari chicane altogether. That was, I think that was the best call he could have done. He saw Tyen losing it, and I think it's better to cut the chicane when you've got a car losing control behind you. And I believe, yep, Cedric has passed Tyen there as well on the back straight. Yeah, although that looked like a blatant corner cut, it was. Um, it was avoiding a, a good, action. It was a good call from Sovic because that could have ended a lot worse um, had he just attempted to try and take Ascari. So it was a good call there from, from Sovic. Um, it doesn't look like White Gooden actually in a really good place to take the race win at the moment because he's 2.2 in front of Hardwick at the moment. That gap has uh, has balanced itself out. Um, oh, that's I think that's Miles Dixon going wide there. Uh, indeed it is. Yes, it was. Uh, but he's outside the points now. Uh, the battle, actually. There's two battles which interest me at this late stage. You're on lap 10 of 12 here. The two battles that interest me are Jack Cedric in 10th and Yard Tyne in 11th there. But we also have Scott Beresford and Tom Parker. And Tom Parker is about a point, well, 1.3 seconds behind Beresford now. And he's got a fourth place in his sights. Beresford is looking at Enterprise GP's equal best position of the year. His personal best position, but Tom Parker, equally, will want to take this for Midnight uh, Motorsport and their constructor standings. Yeah, it's going to be uh, an interesting way. It does look like Parker is closing that gap in um, lap by lap. And it's just, yeah, look at the gap now. It's about one second between the two of them. So uh, it's going to be an interesting way to end the race to see uh, will this battle go on until the end or, uh, or will it be sorted out beforehand? Well, Tom Parker is tucked up nicely in the stretch. I noticed Scott Sobek has got past Pedro Malim for 8th and 9th. And nothing to be done into Parabolica for Parker. But, that said, he is right on the back of Beresford. And I imagine that we might very well see a go into turn 1 for the two Englishmen here. Uh, who's that happening behind there? Oh, there's Malim getting past Sobek again. But here we go. Here comes Parker on Scott Beresford. He's tucked up nicely. He's going to come to the inside now. I do wonder whether he's got... No, he's not. He's going to pull back in. And, oh, a little bit of a tap there, actually, from Parker. And, yeah, he's going to let back Beresford through. So, nice, gentlemanly stuff there from Parker. And I think Beresford is struggling a bit here. His braking's been looking a bit locky-uppy for me. Uh, and I imagine that Parker should be able to outbreak him into at least one of the corners on this Monza circuit in the next couple of laps or so. Yeah, Locky Uppy, the, uh, the good, <laughs> good terms here from the GPB WC commentary crew. Um, and I, I know I keep going back to this, but the uh, the fight between Oscar Hardwick and Wyatt Gooden. Oscar's now whipped down to 1.4 seconds, that in two sectors, which is the last sector of the uh, previous lap and the first sector of this lap. is now 1.2. He's taken it down about a quarter of a second every single sector. So Oscar Hardwick is on a complete charge at the moment for, uh, for Gooden's position. Although it does go very wide through Ascari, so just pointing that one out. He'll have one lap to take the gap down by one second and overtake Gooden in that time. And I wonder whether he will be able to do that. Not many corners to overtake around here in Monza. It's usually on the straight. So you find it. Oh, Beresford goes wide at Ascari. Can Tom Parker do it around the outside? Yes, he wow. can. Wonderful okay, move. But, oh, and his little... My goodness me. That was a wonderful move. But he almost lost it at the same time. Beresford 
look to be taking the voiding action. He's going to look to try and get Parker back on the outside here. But I think Parker's just got the better brakes to be able to do it. He squeezes Beresford out. And he takes the Parabolica nicely. And I believe that is game, set and match. Parker clearly the better driver around Monza here. Yeah, that was uh, a brave place as we're just seeing it on screen now. Brave, brave move there from Parker to take advantage of the uh, the struggling Beresford through that corner. The uh, the gap between Wyatt and Oscar is actually growing ever so slightly this lap. So uh, Wyatt's in a really good place uh, at the moment. But yeah, that, that duel between uh, Scott Beresford. Can Scott now get it under control and start challenging? I don't think so, purely for the fact of how quickly Tom Parker was closing. Um, but ultimately, as you know, it was a really good, good overtake from Parker, anyone would admit. Oh, absolutely. And that means that Midnight is now three and four, but they're not where they really want to be, which is one and two. And that, those two places have been solely occupied by two drivers. Oscar Hardwick, current championship leader, who will further extend his gap after this race. And Wyatt Gooden, who after Hardwick's mistake has been, well, faultless. And he has maintained the gap really, really well. And quite simply put, Oscar Hardwick will not be able to catch up in the two straights which he's got. Uh, I mean, he's pushing. Don't get me wrong. I mean, we saw there on screen Oscar almost lost to Alvascari. But he can do nothing. And on debut here, the real-life F2000 man, the new prodigy from the USA, Wyatt Gooden, takes targets First win here in the WSS since Spain. And that is truly incredible. Fantastic effort from the man there. Uh, really, really on form. Oscar Hardwick, strong second. Alex Hooper is just rounding Parabolica now. And he will take a solid podium. But really, he needs to finish ahead of Hardwick. And he is going to lose yet another four points to Hardwick over the course of this race. It's a podium nevertheless, though. Uh, Tom Parker comes home fourth ahead of Scottsford with Jordan Weeks back in the car for the first time in a round. Solid six. Good job from him. Paul Watkins, the old man, TWI. said a bit of a weird race, actually. He's been in and amongst the action everywhere. But he comes home for a solid seventh. So good job from him there. Scott Sobic, so much promise from FA. Still two guys in the top ten, though. He finishes P8. We then head back to Pedro Malim and Jack Cedric, who are going to go side by side across the line. That was closer than I thought it was going to be. Separated by a tenth in the end. Malim gets ninth, Cedric tenth. Paul Joseph comes across for eleventh. Mike Bell comes on P12. Matt Richards P13. Yarl Tyen after his eventful race comes on P14. And Jason Muscat will start off the candidates for reverse grid pole there in P15. The other candidates are Miles Dixon for Slipstream, Matt Lienowitz, Debutante. For SS Motorsport, Christopher Flitchenstein for Drag Racing, Nico DeConnick for Innovision, and good old Chris Williamson for Woods. We had two DNFs, and they will start on the back row of the grid anyway. Gary Lennon for Team Roxal, and Simon Crane for SS. Yep, and then we had the uh, the disqualified driver. Oh, which was, yes. Uh, Dennis Rutz. Um, be interested to see what the aftermath of that situation is going to be, but... It was a very well-deserved win for, for Wyatt. That was really great stuff there. And uh, before the race, I mean, we said Oscar was going to win it. Both said that. And we both said that Wyatt was going to be the one to look out for. Didn't expect that result, but I'm very happy with it. Well done to Wyatt. Absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, going back to your Schutz point, I think it's very clear what the aftermath will be. The fact of the matter is, is that he was a terrible, terrible backmarker. And he got in people's way. And... Here at VWC and many other racing series, simply put, that is against the rules. Fair enough. So, as I say, we well, we don't necessarily forgive and forget, but we live on, and uh, we forget, and we look forward now to the second race here, which should be absolute. It should be an absolute stonker, actually. It'll be interesting to see what Wyatt can do. From 20th uh, on, well, it won't be 20th on the grid just yet. We have to check what the number is. Uh, but from the back of the grid, shall we say, or the middle of the grid, uh, as compared to, say, the front of the grid, as he, of course, started on the front row. Right then, so I have my random number generator here from 15 to 20. And the reverse grid pole number is... 
16. And Miles so that, Dixon. Miles Dixon goes on pole then. So there we go, from uh, being effectively taken out of, uh, of qualifying, he now starts from pole. Uh, now that's the joy. That's the joy of the reverse grid pole, though. Yep, it is a, a lovely system just to see how any one of, uh, of five or six positions can actually take, can have pole position for the second race. It's, um, it's a really interesting situation that can happen and uh, always makes for an entertaining second race. And I'll tell you what, it's funny to see the response from the drivers about who is on pole as well. Like, there's some people who are the, they're like, oh, cool, he's on pole. You know, we'll be able to get past him, but he's on pole. There are other people that guys are genuinely scared about. <laughs> and and the uh, the response to Miles Dixon getting pole, not too good, must be said. But we have hope that he'll do well. And hopefully we'll get, be able to get some more points in the bag uh, for Slipstream here today and of course actually p16 for the front runners like gooden hardwick cooper it's almost as good as you can get because for those guys at the front they want the least cars to get through to try and get as many points as they can and p16 is the second best result they could have got yep and it is always a good place to start it's um it's uh, gonna be an interesting race as we've already said and uh i don't really know who to look at now because wyatt did so impress, and it's all about now if he can carve his way through through the grid. I don't know if he's going to win again, but uh, you know, or if Oscar can take advantage because Oscar's done it a couple of times before, where he's carved his way through um, a large grid to then take the win. Uh, and it'll be interesting to see who can take the most advantage. But Cooper really needs to step it up if he wants to uh, to challenge for this championship. He really needs to uh, to take a win at the moment. I reckon. I mean. <laughs> Usually when we've had reverse grid poles, they've been quite high and we've been able to see the cat amongst the pigeons, but the front row here is Miles Dixon and Jason Muscat. Now, Jason Muscat has had some good positions, and I think in clean air he'll do alright. But whether he'll win the race, I, I highly doubt it, and I highly doubt Miles Dixon will be able to do it either. I remember Yard Tyen was near the back, though, of the point scorers, and he was deadly fast. Yeah, it's going to be uh, and, uh, one, one to look out for to see who's going to drop back. And this uh, this first corner may be a bit more dangerous this time. But uh, if it goes anything like race one did, it was uh, fairly clean in race one. There was a bit of contact, probably a bit too much contact. But that's really kind of expected for the uh, for the first turn. Um, <laughs> and we saw Mike. Interesting... Huh? Sorry, go on. We, we saw Mike Bell mounting the back of another car. That yeah. was uh... <laughs> yeah, it's a bit too a uh, bit too um, informal. Let's say that. <laughs> A bit too friendly, and I, I just I want to see all the cars just get around this, uh, this this first UK cleanly. Um, saying that though, we are in WSS, and uh, yeah, that's all I really have to say. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I tell you what, I was surprised that there are only two retirements from last race. I was almost certain that there be much much more, and yet there was only two. Yeah, it is. Uh... I think though we've we've said this about like a few of the other leagues was that um, you know with the Super Cup, the Super League, especially the Formula Challenge, was that we thought that the uh, the first corner was going to cause maximum chaos and it was just going to be immediately red flagged, and yet none of the races were. Um, and that first corner is kind of surprising me actually, just to see how actually how cautiously some people are taking it. Um, but I will agree, two people, technically three. Um, didn't finish the race um, and that is a surprisingly low number I mean we have more than that in Silverstone um, yeah. and I'd state that you know if you just look at the two tracks that we're using here when, when you look at Monza and when you look at Silverstone um, I would have gone Monza you know you're gonna get a, a higher attrition rate in Monza but no we have we've had more in Silverstone so one was uh, in wet conditions though one was, yes yes of course so that's fair enough but um, it's nice and sunny here in Italy. It is. Nicely so. No no rain in sight. And I know there's a couple of drivers here that rather wanted rain to try and take advantage of it. But, nope. Lovely bone dry track for us here today at WSS. And I'm sure the majority of drivers at least uh, will be happy about that. So we've got about five and a half minutes left of warm up. And it's difficult to tell what's going through drivers minds at the moment there's a couple of people joking about but for the guys at the front like Miles Dixon, Jason Muscat this is crunch time 
Because realistically, this is a chance where they can get a top 10 position, if they're lucky, uh, and really help out their teams, both of which are in the lower half of the table. Yeah, or you can even score higher than just, just like, you know, focusing on the top 10, you know, there's um, a podium position that theoretically is in, in reach there. It's um, uh, it's uh, both both kind of times, you know, starting from the front row of the grid um, for like Miles Dixon, uh, for someone who's not usually starting up there, it can be a bit um, an odd feeling in the sense of super, super nervous about it, but really excited as well, you know, to have that opportunity to start from the front. Um, this can actually be really distracting, though, you know, just just to like feel the heart beating and everything like that. It can be really distracting and uh, can cause some mistakes. But it's, you know, this is the kind of situation, this is what some of these drivers are put through, um, is that they've got to learn to deal with that. Um, and that's when all of these good results can take. So it's, it's what's going through Miles Dixon's mind at the moment is how he's going to focus himself on just getting that car around the track as opposed to, you know, fighting off everyone, you know, just bashing them out of the way. It's just about keeping that car on the track and that's what he has to be focusing on. I think it's worth having a look at guys further back who have monster starts. A lot of people were absolutely astounded by Oscar Hardwick's start. We were here in the commentary box as well, and Tom Parker as well, an absolute monster start to third for the first corner. They now start, well, let's see, Oscar starts P15, and so that would mean that Tom will start P13, I believe. Considering that they have monster starts, do you think that'd be more of a help or a hindrance to them? Always hard to tell. Um, it depends on who's in front of them, really. Um, <laughs> which, you know, it's it it depends on who's in front of you and how that start goes as to uh, to how as to whether a really good start or a really bad start happens. I think it would be more of a help as opposed to a hindrance, but it can actually cause some pretty serious problems. Um, but, you know, we'll have to wait and find out. We've got about another three minutes of this uh, warm-up left, and then uh, they do their, their little warm-up lap, and then we'll be off. So we've got about five minutes, and then we'll see whether the monster start is a help or a hindrance. Interesting news is that Dennis Schutz is back in the room. And now I'm not sure whether he's going to get removed again or not, or whether he's going to be given an extra chance. Right. And so, right, we've we've heard from our cameraman today, Dave Carsmith, and thank you again, uh, Dave, for doing the cameras, uh, that apparently that was Dennis Schutz's first ever sim race. And, well, I mean, firstly, I'd like to say apologies to Dennis, then, if it was your first sim race. I was expecting you to have some experience, at least. But secondly, I mean, these, these cars, I mean... This proves to me, at least, that these cars are stupidly difficult to get your head around. And if you have, a, you know, if you if you have too little experience combined with a tough car like these to drive, well, I mean, you see what the unfortunate consequences uh, are. Yeah, um, as someone who also did their first ever sim race for the GPVWC, this would not have been the league to suggest these cars are extremely. Um, they, they are difficult to drive. It's kind of like they'll do this one thing around this corner this one time, but then you go around there again and it will react differently there. Um, hard cars to predict. They're hard cars to work with, um, especially getting their setup ready for them. They are remarkably difficult cars. And so this is why for a first ever sim race, this wouldn't be the league that I would suggest. I would suggest something such as Formula Challenge. Because Formula Challenge. Really good. It's a really good starting point. But nevertheless, if he wants to start playing with Porsches from the start, that's fair enough. Um, it's just he can't have a repeat of race one. That will give him no. a terrible reputation. Well, he has promised that he's going to be a lot more safer, a lot you know, better this time around. And we do wish you the best of luck, uh, Dennis. I mean, I, I remember my first sim race. It must have been over, well over a year ago now. And it's scary stuff, you know. It is really scary stuff. And it pushes people into mistakes and... Well, you've got to hope for the best, I guess, and he'll start from the back here and possibly have a chance to reflect, you know, just get bits more settled into the car, and hopefully he'll go into great things. You know, the great thing is that we might be looking at a future race winner. We just don't know. Yeah, true that. It's, uh, it's always a... Uh, I wouldn't say uncomfortable. It's the same thing as, like, starting from the front row. Starting your first of a sim race, you know, you're going to be 
um, excited but quite nervous about the whole situation. Just, you know, especially depending on where you start. Um, and in the consideration that, um, as we pointed out, um, I said about the the tire blowing out, is that he may not have known if he's if he's new to these sim races. Um, it's not like in F1 2012 when um, you just sort of see that on your tire lower, there's it's got attention, it's, 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 it's got to really quickly. That's that's all just how the car feels. Um, and he may not have known that until he was lining up on the grid. Uh, um, I mean, we can see that because you know we've seen this happen quite a lot of the time, but he may not have known that. And uh, no. you know, it, it was an uncomfortable situation that was just going to go badly, and then he had to pit, and then he was at the back, and then he may have been a bit stressed out with the situation. So. Uh, I think it's, it's safe to give him at least a second chance. There's the answer to my earlier question. Jarl Tyne starts third. That, to me, quite clearly puts our race favourite in contention there. It really does. I think Jarl's absolutely got the pace. But either way, let's go off with who is on pole position. Miles Dixon for Slipstream. He's got a real chance to get some good points in the bag here today, does Miles. Hopefully he'll be able to capitalise on that with Jason Muscat for Epic Racing in second. The same applies to him. Y'all tie in for Infinity. Real chance to redeem himself here uh, after a little bit of a dodgy race one. Possible race winner in contention here? Maybe. Don't know. Matt Richards for Team Roxal will start P4 with Mike Bell. P5. We've got Paul Joseph for Royal Blue in P6. Jack Sedgwick for Pulse Racing in P7. Pedro Milin for Simic. In P8, Scott Sovic for FA in P9. And Paul Watkins, the old man himself, for TWR will round out our top 10. Jordan Weeks for FA starts P11 with Scott Beresford for Enterprise GP, P12. The two Midnights then line up alongside each other. Tom Parker for Midnight and Alex Cooper for Midnight as well, 13 and 14. Oscar Hardwick, Championship Leader, starts P15 with last race winner Wyatt Gooden, P16. We then have Matt Leonowitz for SS, P17. Christoph Lichtenstein for Drake, P18. Nico DeConnick for Indivision, P19. Chris Williamson for Woods will round out our top 20. We then have our... Oh, we've got Gary Lennon then for Team Roxal in P21. And Dennis Schutz. Given a second chance here today, we'll start from the back of the grid, P22. And so therefore I see that Simon Crane has not returned. Uh, so, down to one SS Motorsport car, unfortunately. But that is the way sim racing goes. And hopefully, Dennis will be able to do better from the back of the grid than Simon possibly would have done. Yeah, well, um, I used to predict who's going to win this. I don't... I think it's a bit too early to tell who's going to be... Who's got the pace. I mean, y'all... Yeah. Um, but I don't know. I think we're going to get a new race winner, though. Oh. I don't think it'll be one that we've had before in this series uh, of which we actually haven't had too many race winners and a few of the race winners that we have had aren't here anyway yeah um, well we've had six race winners hardwick and cooper and gooden all three of which are here today the other three are Carsa, stroud and hookstra none of them are here today yeah and for that reason i oh, i don't know i th i think we're gonna get a new winner i hope we get a new winner because you know to have um a race where we've had two new winners on the same in the same round that's always like a, a really joyous occasion because it doesn't happen very often and it's always really nice to see these popular new drivers come through to uh to win and i do hope we'll get a new new race winner but they're all lining up on the grid and so uh we're about to find out it'd be exciting and i really hope we get a new race winner as well add a bit of life into this competition yet we may have a clear championship rivalry at this late stage of the season, but there's always chance for new people to impress. We have two, we have three, we have four lights. The five lights are on now. The engine revs will rise and we are way here at Monza for the second time. Miles Dixon off the line well, but look at Jarl Tain looking to get a bit of an advantage here. He's past Muscat already on the straight as we head on down into turn one. Hopefully we won't have too many issues, but it will be Miles Dixon leading it to turn one. He's going to squeeze Tain out. And oh, there's a bit of bashing and bumping, but I don't think anyone is in too much grief. No, they're not. No, they're not. Excellent stuff. And Miles Dixon then will lead us round. The Curva Grande, Jarl Tyen straight up into second and really onto the back of Miles Dixon almost straight away. 
Muscat third, Mike Willard to fourth, and Matt Richards down to fifth. I see a huge gaggle of cars behind him, but can Yaltain take the lead of the race into the Delarogie chicane? Yaltain looks to it, but well held by Miles Dixon. Great defence from the Englishman, but Yaltain, the Norwegian, right up alongside him already. Can he get it to Lesmo? One even. He's on the inside. And the Norwegian takes the lead of the race for Infinity Esports. Muscat keeping station there in third. We've got Bell and Richards quite close together in third and fourth. And look at the gallery cars behind. We've got then Joseph, Malim, Sobic, Parker, Watkins, Hardwick up to 11th, Cooper up to 12th. Gooden, not such a good start, up to 13th. Uh, we've got Cedric then in 14th. And Scott Beresford currently rounds out the top 15. There's Jarl Tyen starting to pull away from the field. We see Matt Richards looking the inside. No, he can't do anything. Here comes Paul Joseph, Pedro Malin. These guys are all very close together, but they're going nicely through Ascari. Look at Tom Parker there. He's had a really good start up to P9. Oh, and Gooden. Gooden has just been taken out. Gooden has just been taken out. I'm not sure who hit him, but Scott Beresford is through into P13, and Gooden is falling down the order now to Nico DeConnick. Uh, who is that? That's so Sobic on the outside of Pedro Malin. There's all, they're always going four abreast into the parabola. Okay, there goes Tom Parker on the inside. And oh my goodness me, and who's that who spun? Oh, Sobic spun. Matt Richards is round. And oh my word, everything's going a bit P Tong now. Unfortunately, Tom Parker's off into the barrier. And that means that Oscar Hardwick is up into ninth. There goes Alex Cooper up into eighth. And yeah, Alex Cooper, the main benefactor out of that. But look at Hardwick here. He's going to be looking to the inside, being a bit boxed in by Richards, unfortunately. Richards going to look to the inside. There's Cedric and Beresford in the background as well. Hardwick hard we get Cooper into turn one. No, Cooper cuts him off very nicely. And oh, what's that in the background? I hear a bit of smashing. Oh, that was... Go, sorry, Vic. Yeah, not... Yeah, yeah, it's okay. Not too much, not too much troubles. But, back up the front. Jarl Tyen, starting to pull away now. Miles Dixon is being hounded by Muscat and Bell, who really caught up on them. And you've got to look at the gap back to Pedro Malin. These guys are re-signed to pull away due to the battling behind them. And all four of these guys, well, all four of them have not won a race. Neither is Pedro Malin or Paul Joseph behind in the battle behind. And oh my goodness me, look at the stuff going on back here after the Delarosia chicane. Scott Beresford has got past Wyatt Gooden and Jack Cedric. And oh, what was that? There's a bit of carnage back there as well. But my goodness me, is Wyatt, is Wyatt going to look into Lesmo too? No, he surely can't. No, he won't. And thank goodness for that. But Wyatt really on a charge. And there goes Tom Parker wide once again. He's able to save it. But Alex Cooper is in seventh, in seventh. Hardwick eighth. Maverick is ninth. And there goes Wyatt Gooden past Scott Beresford on the straight for P10. It should be. Scott Beresford's going to try and hold his line. No, he's not. He's going to go into the chicane. Yeah. Um, oh, right. Oh, God. Did Cooper go wide? Uh, oh, and is that, is that Dixon as well? Dixon's been off as well. Interesting. Um, but Cooper kind of mounted the curb on the inside of the second part of the uh, of the Ascari chicane and tried to get an it looked like he tried to get an advantage that way but I was about to say he was crucially in front of Hardwick and then uh, Hardwick did that Hardwick though going Whoa. very wide around the Parabolica and that's going to cost him time all the way down the straight absolutely Alex Cooper who lost out there looks like he might be able to get back through but the problem is now he's got Dixon taking the inside line Alex Cooper's going to go to an even more inside line and they're going to go three abreast into turn one this should not work in a million years but it probably will hopefully Dixon hold him out oh my goodness me what a move my oh my goodness me what happened there I saw Matt Richards going flying past the chicane but what a move from Hardwick just pulled it across all of them and took P6 great move yeah, absolutely excellent stuff there from Hardwick. That's showing why he should be in the uh, in the championship lead at the moment. But Alex Cooper is right on that rear wing going into Del Roger Chicane. He's picked the outside line, not the one that you have to uh, that you can really take for an overtaking move. But uh, Alex Cooper's keeping close. He's got a bit wide there, but Cooper's keeping close to Hardwick, and that is really what he needs to do. He actually needs to get in front of Hardwick, to be perfectly honest. But um, oh, well, there goes Wyatt. Wyatt. Wyatt almost lost it on the exit of Lesbo 1. Here goes Scott Beresford into Lesbo 2, my word! That's a ma- oh my- oh, yeah, uh, that was never going to work. I mean, uh, that would have been impressive if he pulled it off, but that was never going to work on the inside of Lesbo 2. No, that is one of the trickiest places to even attempt an overtaking move, but look at- wow, look at Hardwick and Cooper, they're just, you know, just picking their lines Whoa. down the entire grid. Now that is a- uh, not Cooper lost really it. The, uh, not really the racing line I would state through the Ascari chicane there for Cooper. Yeah, Cooper's lost out and he might very well lose out to Paul Joseph here. This is not what he wants. He wants to finish ahead of Hardwick and he's there. He's ahead of him. But he's just unable to capitalise on anything which goes on ahead of him. 
I think he's trying to push a little bit too hard and it's costing him. Mm, absolutely. Back up at the front though, fair play to Jarl Tyne. He's streaming ahead. He's 5.7 seconds ahead of Mike Bell here in second. Pedro Malim's now up into third ahead of Jason Muscat. But there's Oscar Hardwick and he's really starting to catch up on these guys here. Mike Bell locks up into the first chicane. Here we go, these three now. Jason Muscat almost clipping the back of Malim. And oh, he's almost taking out Hardwick. He's pretty much taking out himself, actually. Um, and well, oh, is that Cooper there? Oh gosh, that is Cooper. My word, what is going on? Cooper has got past Muscat as well. And these two are now into fourth and fifth. So we can see how good they've done. Wyatt is still back in eighth position. And what's happened to Cooper? He Cooper. seems to have lost a hell of a lot of speed. Uh, it seemed like Cooper got around uh, Muscat on the inside of the first UK. Uh, I, I didn't really see it because I, uh, I, I was on board with Miles Dixon. It looked like Muscat actually flashed his lights, but um, I couldn't really see it. It could have just been like a little lighting glitch from my angle. But Dixon, though, down to seventh place from pole. It's not really been the best start of a race for him, to be perfectly honest. To the top ten, is that Cooper round? Oh, Cooper almost lost on Lesmo 2. Jason Muscat. Oh, right, so we're hearing back from, uh, yeah, so basically, you're right, uh, Lewis, uh, he did cut the chicane, he did take the place, and so he's just given the place back to Muscat there. Um, so Muscat back up into fifth, P3 now, Pedro Malim, really starting to struggle, and Hardwick should be around the outside of him, well, I'd imagine, at this uh, next corner, the Parabolica. Question is, can, actually, can he do it? Possibly not. Pedro Malim staying ahead and nicely defended from Pedro. Can Hardwick probably do it though? A bit of contact there from the two. And I believe Pedro's still going to have the inside. Yes, he is. Decent defense, but Hardwick seems to have the better straight line speed overall anyway. And indeed, he is passed already on the pit straight. Into the podium position is Hardwick. Yeah, nothing wrong with a little bit of wheel banging, but uh, Hardwick taking the most advantage of that. And Pedro is not kind of letting him go at the moment, but he's going to PB on the outside of the first cane, which is not where you want to be. Oh. Uh, he does. He's going to give that position back, surely. Yeah, there you yeah. go. Um, but in, in some situations, it is actually smart to cut the first cane as opposed to even trying to go around it, because it can just really cost um, cost drive, I mean, especially for Pedro. If, if like you spin halfway around that corner, then you could still whack Hardwick, and then that re really wouldn't have been a pretty sight. So, um, you know, at least he gave the position back. We're on lap five of twelve here at Monza, and Yarl Tying currently leads by seven point two seconds from Mike Bell. However, Mike Bell is beginning to get hounded by Hardwick, and I think that Hardwick has absolutely got the pace to reel Yarl in here if he gets past Bell quickly enough. Yeah, but look at uh, look at Wyatt Gooden. He's not too far off of the back of Muscat of Dixon, so uh, I think he'll be looking for a move ever so shortly. If not, he's going to be uh, fresh meat there for Tom Parker in the background. Here we go down into the Ascari chicane. It looks like they're yeah. almost going to go about three wide, but Gooden is going to get past Muscat. Yes, he is. Good stuff there from Gooden. Oh, Dixon. who's that off? Oh, oh, no! Oh, and that was unlucky that he just spun out of control. And Wyatt Gooden, his race has gone. Oh, and he is out. Wyatt Gooden has gone. And that was a real shame. He was on a real charge, but unfortunately, nothing doing there. Mike Bell, oh my word. He almost hits into Hardwick, but Hardwick has got Mike Bell around the outside. And Hardwick is now up into P2 here. What is the gap at the start finish line? It is 8.2 seconds. Can Hardwick take the battle to tie in? in the six laps that we have left. I think it's entirely plausible. He's got a long, long way to close. and He's not really got too many laps to do it. And that's a lot of time. He's got to be basically cutting down that gap by about one and a half, maybe two seconds a lap to even get into, uh, into the firing range. And it's going to be a long struggle there for Hardwick. But if he can do it, then he's going to be even more valuable points. It's just going to push him further and further in that championship lead. Cooper's got past Malim as well, uh, so he is doing well as well here. Look at the battle here for P8 and P9. Paul Joseph and Gary Lennon side by side with the Curva Grande. Got Scott Beresford as well in the background, still in the top 10. And he's going to look for a bit of opportunity here. He looks at the inside. He's going to pull back in. And heading into the Doris Chicane, Gary Lennon takes it. Lovely move, but they were very, very, very slow through there. And look at Scott Beresford, the ever the opportunist. He's got past... Paul Joseph already, and into Lesmo 1 we go. 
And yeah, that's nicely done. And who's that? Who's DNF? That's Jack Cedric. Cedric out as well. And well, I think I heard a crash there. And a De La Roche chicane. And Cedric is out of this race then. I also saw Dixon cut it in the background. Um, so not really sure what happened there. Gap between Hardwick and TN is now uh, 7.9. He's not taking it down enough. That is over two sectors. Don't forget yeah. on this lap. I think TN's actually got it at the moment. He needs a second and a bit per lap for you, doesn't he? Yeah, he needs to cl cut that gap quite a bit, but considering you said at the beginning of the race that TN actually has some pretty good pace around here at the yeah. moment, uh, maybe not quite. Oh, and oh, Cooper's spun at the Parabolica. Oh, no. Cooper has gone at the Parabolica, unfortunately, and I see Miles Dixon's DNF'd as well. Cooper falling down the order, and I, you know, although we're saying that Yarl TN's looking good for the race, Oscar Hardwick fundamentally is looking excellent for the championship at the moment. Yeah, he is indeed. He's actually just at the fastest lap of the race. But yeah, I think Tien's just got the pace. You know, maybe not quite Oscar Hardwick's actual pace. Um, oh, there we go. That's how Cooper went round. He just tapped into the back of someone going into uh, into the Parabolica and it just spun him round. I think it was actually Mike Bell that he tapped the back of. It just spun him round. Um, but yeah, Tien's got the pace just to keep um, Hardwick at bay. Hardwick's got the outright pace. Although saying that, the gap is now 6.7 seconds. Mm. So he's doing what he needs to at the moment. So unless TN made a mistake for that first sector, then Hardwick has actually got this car hooked up. Alex Cooper getting past Jason Muscat, the Delaroche chicane. Yep, just about. But can Jason Muscat get the cut back? If he can, this will be an excellent move from Muscat into Lesmo 1. Can Cooper hold around the outside? Oh, my word. They're still side by side. And Muscat's lost the inside. Oh, no. Round, round, round he goes. Here comes Scott Beresford now. He's got past Gary Lennon into turn one. What can he do against Muscat? He was up at this stage a while back, actually. And, well, oh, can you imagine where he would have been had he not made that move on Cooper that early in the race? Um, oh, my word. Look, look at that gap, Lewis. Look at that gap between Hardwick and Tian. It's closing very very quickly I thought Tian may have I, I don't know what's going on with Tian because he seemed to have held it well on the uh, on the previous lap but Hardwick's just getting faster and faster maybe Tian's actually getting slower and slower but we'll have to see as they're about to just cross the line what's the gap going to be will Hardwick's at the fastest lap of the race the gap is 5.2 seconds will Hardwick get a fast lap I don't think he actually did um, let's have a look um, nope Hardwick didn't actually set the fast lap of the race so Tian oh. Is uh, is tripping over himself? Yeah, actually, if you look at his lap, it was point two. Uh, it's two point two seconds slower than his previous lap. So you know, it was just the mistakes. Yeah, it must have just been a few mistakes. So it's going to be interesting to see if Tien can actually keep that car on the road. That's all he needs to do. Scott Beresford, though, let's have a look. He's just um, defending there from Muscat. He's actually got him round Muscat. And, uh, oh yeah, stuff there from Scott Beresford. Over to B seven once again is the Englishman put on a good performance here. Bit far behind Alex Cooper to do anything, I think. But, considering the people ahead of him have been making mistakes, it's not entirely plausible that he might be able to capitalise here. Y'all tie in, though. Well, he's that gap's gone down a whole again. other chunk again to 4.2. We're on lap 8 of 12 here. So Hardwick still has to... Oh, God, there is Hardwick, actually. Oh, Nella, what's happened to Mike Bell? Mike Bell's had an off. Mike Bell has had an off. And where is that? That's at Lesmo 1. You were saying about some one. drivers making some mistakes higher than Scott Beresford, yep. and there is one, and there goes Scott Beresford. Yep, and Muscat and indeed. Muscat. So Mike Bell, from a podium position, is now down to P8, and Scott Beresford and Jason Muscat capitalise on that, up to P6 and P7. Tom Parker into the podium as well. Again, look at this cap, Lewis. It's gone down to 3.1 now. This is consistently going down. What has happened to T? And I don't think this is consistently in making a mistake in the sector. Is that I don't think that car's working the way TM wants it to, whereas Hardwick is working absolutely perfectly. Um, we're just about to have them cross the line. I'm going to be interested to see what TN's lap. Absolutely. It was 1.4 off of his best was TN's lap, so he is losing even more time. The gap is three seconds dead. So and Hardwick sets the fastest lap of the race in a 150 flat. Hardwick, there's three laps left. Hardwick is going to have to... Oh, sorry, there's four laps left even. My apologies. Yeah, we've got... Yeah, 9, 10, 11, and 12. So, yeah, Hardwick is doing all that he needs to to get past here. And he's a good, these two are good friends, actually. It must be said. I'm sure there will be a bit of respect between them 
once they do come into combat and I think that is inevitably looking like the case but going into the sector one split now the gap is 2.7 seconds that's another two tenths out of the lead in that sector alone I think y'all might not be able to get this actually yeah I, uh, it's going to be a bit of an iffy situation here as uh it didn't look too comfortable. The car didn't look very planted through the first Les Mercy. What it's like for the second, uh, still, yeah, Decent. it doesn't doesn't look as planted. Whereas you see Hardwick going through. The car is absolutely mm. level. It's flat. That car is perfectly balanced. as Hardwick's. Tian's not so much. In, I think we're going to be looking at sector times pretty much until the end of the race. Now we're just going through the sector two split now. Five tenths in sector two. And very well, I mean, sooner or later, Hardwick and all oh, the team goes wide. And that is, that's possibly why Hardwick is catching up so much. And Hardwick will be in the slipstream sooner or later. And that is when Jarl is going to be most vulnerable. I think Tien's defensive ability is going to be tested to the max here as we have another couple of retirements. Matt Leonowitz and Miles Oh no, sorry, I lied. Matt Richards also out of the race. Yeah, you say about the uh, the slipstream advantage of that and how well Tien could defend. Now, in from from what I know, especially in like these kind of cars, what you need to be, say, two seconds, maybe one two seconds faster than the car ahead to make an you know an easy overtake, an effectively easy overtake. Uh, which do you look at the speed differential between Oscar Hardwick and Tien? There is probably about one and a half to two seconds between them every single lap, so I don't think this is going to be a particularly difficult move for Hardwick if he can actually just put it in the right place, and he's doing that right now. Yarl's going to have a push. Note on Alex Cooper and Pedro Malim. Cooper has actually got past Malim at the first chicane and has done very well to do so. Been catching up for the last couple of laps and is now right there. And Well, look at Hardwick. That's another two tenths out of sector one i wonder if it's going to be another five tenths here in sector two i mean dear, look look at that just loses time hand over fist and no, i yeah that he didn't look comfortable through the della roger chicane either he no didn't look like he had his breaking zone set up properly i don't know what's going on with t in here at the moment absolutely not let's see i mean we should be expecting the gap to be 1.3 of sector times to go by be 1.3 Yarl's found some some form of consistency. Unfortunately, it's not the consistency which he needs. And at this rate, Oscar Hardwick will be within striking distance in the next lap or so. Yeah, I think he's going to be able to put it in the right place unless Oscar makes some, some stupendous mistake. Um, which you don't really see happening. Not with Oscar. Oscar's pretty consistent. You know, he's good at putting it in these positions and not really reacting too much under pressure. Um, and it does look like it's going to be one of these uh, podium, you know, these, these double podium oh, situations right. that he's put himself in so many times. Good final sector from Tian. Only 1.2 1, 1. seconds is now the gap. And so perhaps he can hold it on for another lap. That means he only has one lap to defend. But look, 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 at, look at that. He closes in the braking sectors. Damn, that is, that is a car. This is the difference between a car that's good and a car that is hooked up. This is the difference. Definitely. Hardwick has this car hooked up. Tian has a good car, but this isn't like what Hardwick's car is. Hardwick's car is absolutely balanced, it's absolutely flat, and the first sector is now one second flat. That's, that's only another door! Oh, my word! Tian almost lost it there, and oh my god, here, here he comes. Here comes Hardwick. That lap for Tian to defend is going to very quickly become a lap and a half or so as Hardwick is right on the back of the Norwegian here. As I say, the two are good friends, and I imagine there'll be good respect between each other. And oh, they both go wide. And Gary Lennon is dnf as well. Here comes Hardwick, though. Tian is going to have to defend here and now. If he's smart about it, he might be able to capitalize on the slipstream. But Hardwick's going to try and go around the outside of Ascari here. Can he do it? Oh, it's all so close. And my word, well held by Tian. But my, yeah, he's going to have a hell of a job on his hands to keep Hardwick by now. Don't think he's going to be able to do it, not into the breaking zones of the Della Roja chicane. In the first chicane, it's just going to be too much. Um, and, you know, we've already said this before, is that Hardwick's straight line speed has been, you know, phenomenal in these cars oh! in comparison to the rest of them. And I think he's going to have it done down the pit straight. Look at him, Oh, absolutely, look at him yeah. The Parabolica, TN was looking 
a squiggly as a squiggly worm. And they use almost every single inch of road that they have. In fact, I'm sure that's possibly illegal as they were both off the racing track as it was. Tayin defending for his life. Hardwick, he pulls out to the inside and he's going to go very late into turn one. And that is signed, sealed and delivered. The postman has been and gone. Hardwick takes the lead of this race. And TN is left for dust. I wonder whether he might try another diving manoeuvre into the Delarosier chicane. Something tells me he might not be able to do it, though. Uh, I, I don't think so. I mean, we look at how strong Hardwick was under braking. Is he is actually going to have a little look, but... Hardwick's super strong under braking and... Uh, oh, my word. Enough. Oh, can he get him on the cutback? Can he get him on the cutback? This would be astonishing if Yaltain can stick it up there. Yes, he can. Yes, he can. And Norwegian takes the lead of the race once again. He's going to push Hardwick out wide. Oh, my word. How well, on I earth think, did he hold that? I think Oscar saved him there a bit, if I'm perfectly honest. He uh, looked like Tian was going to start going round, but Oscar was right there. In the right place at the right time for Tian, really. Tian is not giving this up and he's going to defend all he is worth in the last sector or so of this race. Hardwick coming up alongside him into the entrance to Ascari. Can he do it around the outside? No, he can't. Tian holding the line. Oh my word, he holds the line nicely. And what's better is he was kind of wobbly as well, forcing Hardwick to go on the brakes a bit. Hardwick down the straight though, can he do anything? I think his advantage is out of the parabolica, not necessarily down the straight. Tian takes his racing line once again, and this is going to be a race to the vision. Oh, there's a bit of contact, actually. Hardwick went into the back of Tian, and can he get him on the final corner? Oh, my word, it's side by side, but Hardwick, I think, is just about going to take it. Let's see if he can get... Oh, there's a bit of contact, and he almost forces Hardwick into the pit lane. And that was, well... Interesting. I, I don't know whether that was in jest or... Well, Tian's left the game. I think that might have been in rage. Oh, hello, and we have team orders in P3. Look at this, Tom Parker letting Cooper through. Oh, well, well, well. Cooper's been thrown a lifeline. Tom Parker lets Cooper take P3. That is very interesting. Parker will take P4. Malim P5. Scott Beres at home in P6. A great result for him. Mike Bell, home P7. Good points for him. Muscat P8. Just ahead of Christoph Lichtenstein, actually. Great race from Lichtenstein. John Wicks in P10. Paul Watkins, P11. Paul Joseph, after all of that, will come home in P12. Scott Sobic on his own, really, in P13. Nico de Konink is the next down the road in P14. And, well, 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 will you look at this, Lewis? Look who is in P15. Dennis Schutz. A nightmarish first race. And here, as I pray he gets it round... These final turns now, he will score a point on debut. In these cars. In these cars. Very impressive. Very impressive. After what can only be described as an absolutely terrible uh, first race, especially for a debut on that can really knock you off a bit, you know, having a, a very so bad, especially with, um, you know, quite a lot of criticism from you, yourself, James. Ooh. Well, um, I, you know, I believe in second chances. I will I'll criticize when necessary, but he said that he would come back and have a cleaner race for the second race, and fair play to him. He's just gone and done it. He scores a point for Drake Racing, and that is well-deserved, I think. But congratulations to Oscar Hardwick for taking that win. I think Jarl deserved second, at least, but the way he did it at the end and the manner in which he left the room afterwards, I don't think he was happy with that at all. No, I think there's going to be some interesting conversations between the two of them after this race um, as, as they get to the bottom of what actually happened. I think Yar was a bit, um, I mean, even if, they, if, even if it was a, I don't know, a jokey thing between friends, even though I kind of think that's a bit silly. to. You know, well, he left the room straight of, after. Exactly. I think it was a bit too, um, it's far, far too aggressive. Um, well, let's remember, Oscar Hardwick bumped... Uh, in, into the entrance of the Parabolica there. Perhaps he thought that Hardwick didn't deserve to go through on him. Yeah, I'd, I I don't know where I'm going to side with this. Um, and to be quite frank, I'm not going to side either way. No. Um, I'm going to say Oscar was was late on the braking um, into, the, uh, into the 
Parabolica, but Tian was just a bit too aggressive coming down the pit straight. And uh, I'm not going to side either way with this. I'm just going to say both of them really need to look at what just happened. Good friends. Hopefully they'll sort it out. I think a well-deserved podium for good old Yarl there. Anyway, I think he's really proven himself to be a decent racer. And I tell you what, when he retook the lead, that was absolutely clean and well-deserved. Yeah, he was defending for his life, bless him. And so absolutely deserved. All the points he got there in that race really proved himself as a great driver. So we're just hopefully getting some interviews for you. We've got Oscar Hardwick, uh, Pedro Milim, Tom Parker, and Mike Bell. So let us start with Oscar Hardwick here. Yeah. Extending your championship lead even further. That you now have a full round barrier. Even if Alex Cooper takes two wins, you have a full round barrier to yourself. I mean, that alone should be huge relief for you. Well, that's that was um, given the 46 point advantage I had prior to this round. That was my goal um, to try and get the 50 point plus, as it were, so that I've got that barrier. I mean, I'm moving house at the end of August, so there's a good chance I'm going to miss a round. So I needed the barrier more than ever. Right. So it, the fact that it's there now is fantastic. That should be very interesting indeed. Um, we, we'd like a bit of comment actually on what happened at the end yeah. of race two. A great battle between you and Jarl at the end. And I think that's one of the best races to the finish I have seen. Until that was, we got to the Parabolica. A complication between you and Jarl in the breaking zones. You then take the lead. And from our view at least, Jarl tried to push you into the pit lane and then left the game straight after all almost in a rage. I mean, we know that you're good friends with him. Do you know anything of what happened? For, or, you know, at least share your view of the incident with us. Um, in terms of the incident, the first part, entering Parabolica, because I'm leading the championship and that first place is so many more points, I'd, I thought about having to go from where I was and then quickly decided against it because I was a bit too far back. The problem was at that point, your tyres and your brakes are gone. So I locked up massively and hit him in the back. Now, had he spun, maybe I'd have stopped, but you know, probably not. I mean, he's driven that's twice now, and I'm fighting for the championship, so I'd probably have taken the five ten place grid penalty or something as opposed to letting him back past. Um, you know, I understand his frustration afterwards when he tried putting me into the wall. In all honesty, I think if he really, really wanted to put me into the wall, he would have. He probably could have done more. He did back off before we got to the line. So, it, it, yes, he's frustrated and you know, pissed off. I'll, I'll, Excuse me. I'll have to go no and um, I have to go and apologise to him personally, and hopefully we can, you know, kiss and make up. It was my mistake to begin with, but again, given the championship position, I was not going to be given the position back. Well, that's that's very interesting to hear, actually. And well, I, I guess that if you are missing around, I can imagine that in that position, I'd probably do the same. So, well done on your race victory, anyway. Thank well you done much. on your second place in the first round as well, and we'll hope to see you next time. Let's now move on to Tom Parker. What a start in race one. That was absolutely astonishing, and uh, really a decent round for you overall. We know you had a bit of issue in race one, but good points for midnight overall. Yeah, yeah. It was. I think it was basically best of the rest again today. Um, obviously, I wish Yarl had wrecked or tried to wreck Oscar a bit earlier, and Dave kicked him or something, so I'd have got a podium in race two. But... You know, yeah, I think it's a good round. Best I could have done, really. No more, no less. Especially in race one, where I had to do a bloody fight back. That was a pain. <clears throat> and interestingly, you let Cooper pass for a podium in race two. Uh, very, very interesting. I mean, clearly, are you uh, is Midnight as a whole gearing towards Cooper for the championship now? Uh, that I mean, Midnight have got quite a sizable gap in the championship, uh, constructors-wise, as it is. So are you kind of going full effort into Cooper challenging uh, Hardwick now? Well, ever since I missed it, was I think that was the main point, but yeah, <laughs> well, well he's, in, he's in a championship battle, I'm not, simple as, so he did say to me after the race that I should have kept it, but like I think you all saw on my bloody chat before the, end, the race at the end, I said no, he's, <laughs> Oscar's in the, I was now, especially the Oscar won, he's, Alex needs all the points he can get, so like, like Oscar said, if he's missing a round, Oscar needs, um, Alex needs the points, so yeah, I'm not too bothered, I knew, I was just, uh, I knew fourth was all the best I could get today, so I'm happy and hot. Well, <laughs> I think we're all hot at the moment. Uh, but I think very gentlemanly and very good team player uh, strategy there, and well done in your points picked up. Anyway, let's head over to Pedro Malim for Simink. 
you're in a lot more battles uh, this time around, and I believe you have uh, sort of made a more secure dent into the championship in terms of securing P4 in the drivers. Uh, how was your race evening overall? Did you think the driving standards were as good as previous rounds? I mean, there was a bit more scrappiness, uh, at least from our point of view, over the two races. I can tell you that Monza is not a track for me, and I don't like it at all. I was just going to do my best to hear. Uh, I think my best today was fifth in the second race, and I think ninth in the first one. Could have been better in the first one without the incidents, but overall it's a good result. Not a perfect one, but, well, it's points, and that's what it counts for me. Absolutely, and we're looking at Simink here, kind of in a weird position, because you've got Milk Racing ahead of you, a good 100 points ahead of you, the last count, with only one driver. You've got Target behind you, also only with one driver per event, and you've got FA, who looked amazing in qualifying, but then kind of failed to follow up on it afterwards. Are you considering anyone as threats around you, and do you know whether you'll have a teammate for any future rounds to kind of secure Simink as third in the championship? Uh, for now, I don't. I don't know. It's up to the team boss to 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 see if you can if we can get uh, another driver. But well, I, I show up in the rounds. I try to do my best. I can practice as much as I wanted to. Um, some personal stuff in the way, but well, it's it's a good fun with all the battles we can have in uh, sports series and such. Uh, was fun, but. Uh, well, it's difficult to get even uh, more more points than this, uh, being teams and individual. Well, you still got good points either way, so congratulations on your results from today. We now move on to Scott Sobic for FA. Fabulous qualifying, sir. That was really out of the blue for both yourself and Jordan. But as I alluded to earlier, you kind of failed to deliver that uh, same kind of pace in both races. Was that due down to personal mistakes or was the race pace just not there overall um we did have race pace but i think it, it was like we were we were we had targets on our car so <laughs> we just i didn't have any chance to move up very far so but a bit disappointing also i was a bit disappointing with qualifying because i could have gone what eight tenths quicker i think so uh, is Monza one of those tracks which you're really good at then? Uh, or is this just a set-up breakthrough overall? A bit of both. I, I've, you know, I've uh, had some good rounds at Monza before, especially you know, in the Formula Challenge. But, uh, yeah, I did, it was quite hard to find the balance with the Porsche. But overall, I think I managed to find it, and I think that did help a lot. I had, although, when you have a car, that depends so much on you know rear downforce. It's, it's really hard to drive consistently, and I think that did cause a bit of havoc among the field. So, yeah. Well, either way, if you've got that pace again for Spa, we would certainly love to see it. Should spice up the constructors a bit, and so wish you the best of luck with next race. And then we end with Mike Bell. Uh, Really, really good qualifying to get into the top 10 for you uh, once again. And again, good points overall. I mean, it's for a rookie, you're not doing good. You're not doing too badly, sir. Thanks. Um, <laughs> I, I threw away a potential podium, though, in race two, which I'm slightly annoyed about. And uh, a few incidents of uh, contact here and there in race one knocked me down a bit, but. So it could have been better, but obviously coming into the event with nothing to lose means that anything is a good result. And we look forward to uh, Spa here. Of course, Spa was where you made your uh, GWC World GT debut, uh, if I remember correctly. And you got points there. Uh, in the WSS cars, how confident are you feeling on scoring big points uh, uh, in Belgium? Um, Pace-wise, I mean... Even at Monza, I mean, I didn't have any pace until about 20 minutes before qualifying where I just found something that worked. So I assume it's going to be the same case at Spa. 
and I'm just going to have to try and rely on a bit of consistency and a bit of a uh, bit of luck here and there to get some good points. But you know, I I wasn't confident going in coming into Monza, and then I came away with a uh, couple of very good results and some points. So you know, why not? Let's go for big points at Spa. Absolutely. Now, I've actually received a little Skype message here from Dave Carr-Smith to confirm a couple of lineups for next round, uh, Lewis, and it's basically the PGE group. Now, if you haven't been following the PGE group, which is CSG, Midnight, and Simic Motorsport, it's been a bit topsy-turvy, actually. We've had Tom Parker go to Midnight, we had Pedro go to Midnight, Pedro's been at Simic and CSG, Tom's been at Simic as well, Roy was at Simink and left for a bit and then we had it's it's all very complicated really but apparently we have quite solid lineups for the final few rounds and so at midnight we've got Alex Cooper of course what's interesting to me is Luke Euler current championship leader in Super League and Alex's closest rival in World GT Championship uh he's joining the team until the end of the season well, that'll be something and to look out for. That's certainly going to be something to look out for. Simic will go back to Tom Parker and Roy Schroten. He is definitely coming back for next week. And so they will have two drivers. And Pedro is going to go back to CSG to try and get some more points or whenever he's got some time. So I think Simic's going to be looking quite strong. Midnight, though, what on earth will Lucas bring to that team? I mean, if, we, if he's got the same sort of team tactics in mind that Tom had today... I imagine that team might be looking very strong indeed, and Cooper might have a very good wingman, and that's hard to say of Lucas, really. Yeah, Lucas um, is actually what I think is one of the best drivers in GBVWC. He's very fast, and he always seems to pull out something, um, something extra um, that you know you just kind of like as as another driver you look at and you go, where, where, where can you possibly have found that time? But he always finds it, um, and so I think that addition to the. Uh, to the, uh, to the World Sports Series is going to be uh, an interesting addition. It's going to make things a little bit more, in, you know, just a little bit exciting, I think, especially for the front of the grid. Right, so we've actually got one more quick interview before uh, we leave you, and that's with Scott Beresford, Enterprise GP driver. Didn't have Matt Allington here today, uh, but really, really good results. You've scored 21 points in total on your own, which I think is five points off the team's second best so far. Uh, really, really good races from you. Thank you. I should say that because I'm the team boss, but shh. But anyway, um, we saw you actually make a move, uh, or at least try and make a move, uh, at Alex Cooper into Lesmo 2 in race 2. Was that just a misunderstanding between yourself, or did you feel confident that you could at least take the move, or make the move uh, stick? Was it um, Alex Cooper? I thought it was... Um... Well, it might have been Tom Parker, even. It's one of the midnights, I'm sure. I thought it was... Um... I can't remember his name now. He is literally his first race this week, um, but he was one of the fastest guys. Oh, Wyatt's, of course, yes. Yeah. yeah, that's the one. Um, no, I, I don't know. I thought we could have got through it side by side, um, but I think he took more of the inside than I expected him to, so I hit him and spun. That was basically it. But you still got two top tens, and looking looking on to Spa, you got your teammate back, of course. Uh, we're looking strong there? Yeah, definitely. Um, I think it will help with having Matt back to assist me with setup. Uh, so we should be should be even faster next race. Right then. So thank you very much, all gentlemen, for your time. We've got WSS in two weeks' time at Spa Frankenshaw. It promises to be one of the most exciting rounds. We may have rain, but before then, of course, if you want to catch some more tin top action. Tomorrow, we have the World GT at Bathurst. Lewis is going to be alongside me, and that, and indeed Spa, promise to be absolutely excellent events. So, from Lewis, it is goodbye. Goodbye. And from myself, it's goodbye as well. We hope to see you for the next broadcast.